This is a huge mistake that you're making here that you're not even realizing, which is the fact that you're... What is going on you guys, A21 Mayo here, and in today's video, we're going to be having ourselves another viewer VOD review video. Now, as I was looking at the viewer's VOD form, he kept saying that he wants to be more con consistent, and he also wants to increase his confidence. So those are the two main outliers with the things that he struggles with, and also, you know, the basic stuff of just learning from the mistakes and, you know, uh, you know that basic stuff as well. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the VOD itself. So when it comes to taking your drone into the building, this is a huge habit that a lot of attackers have and, you know, teammates have is they just want to drive their drone straight into the building. And the biggest thing that I say when it comes to this is make sure that you have a destination or a specific purpose or place that you want to put your drone. So that way you have a spot where you want to go to and you know the route to get to that location, the safest route that is. And also the whole argument of people saying, oh, well, we don't know what the objective is or we don't know what defenders they have. Well, one, you can figure out what objective it is if you don't know 100% just by spawning in, throwing your drone, and then finding out where it is. You can do that. And also, to figure out what defenders they have, people might say that they need to take their drone into the bomb site. That's not necessarily true. In this example here, we have a Cade. Once the wall is electrified and you don't know they have the Cade, you can say that it's, e that it's either a bandit or a Cade. If you see a maestro cam, you know that they have a maestro. If you see a mute jammer, you know they have a mute. Do you see where I'm going with this? Utility and gun sounds give away what defenders are being brought for the round. So the argument of saying that I need to see what operators they're bringing, you don't. Before we carry on with the video, I quickly want to mention that 50% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you guys have not hit that sub button already, I would really appreciate it. It also helps out with the YouTube algorithm. I also want to mention that I can coach you. So if you guys want a private coaching session or a private VOD review session, there's a link to my Patreon down below in the description. And yes, I do coach console players. And lastly, I also want to mention that I have a second channel. What you can find here is exclusive content like private coaching sessions you can also find tier lists and any other content that is from my twitch live stream a link to that is also in the description So this is a huge mistake that you're doing right off the bat here as the hard breaching operator. You know, you guys are really struggling with getting the CCTV wall open. We're, we're roughly a minute and 10 seconds into the round, and you guys have not opened the CCTV wall yet. If you are wanting to attack CCTV or whatever it is, your first step of this attack should be getting CCTV wall open to on the platform to CC itself. So in order to do that, you're going to need to go below. You might need a nade. If Dokubi has the nades, I, I'm not sure what season this is. I don't know if this is when Floris was out or not. I didn't really pay attention to the operators in the operator selection phase. But nonetheless, you have a keyboard. You possibly have a mic. Communicate with the Zofia. If the Dokubi has the nades, communicate with her. Tell them, hey, let's get the Kate off a of CC. Open the wall, and then you can go about attacking the rest of the round. Because your first initial step every single round for this attack to cash in cctv is to get the wall open if you don't have that wall open you're not cutting the bomb site in half which is a huge thing that i keep bringing up throughout this series and on my channel and you're also not going to have any external pressure i mean you do have the window here which is a substitution for the cc wall open but your positioning is much more predictable which usually means that you're much easier to kill so that's why having the cc wall open is so important it applies a lot of pressure to the defenders and if you don't apply that pressure you're one, not only going to allow them to rotate in and out of CC if nobody's on the window, and two, you're going to allow them to play much more power positions or many more power positions just in CC itself. So it's very important that you get this wall open. Why don't you wall bang? So what you're doing here is you're doing something called face checking. And this is another really bad habit to form. Um, you're using your face, your operator, your life to get info on areas of the map. Especially when you have the opportunity of something crazy that's in the game, which is called a drone. 
I know this might be a new concept to some of you guys, but yeah, you have drones as attackers to help aid you get info on areas of the map and take map control. Not use your face, your operator, your life to get that map control. Use your drones, get that info, play off of your drones. You know, it's a very basic concept and thought that drones are a second or third life. And if you lose those lives early or put them to waste or don't use them at all, that's your mistake and you need to learn how to use drones properly. This is a huge skill set that a lot of players don't understand how to have. And, you know, everyone makes mistakes while they're droning, but it's important that you learn from those mistakes. Even me, myself, you know, I'm no perfect droner, but the first step when it comes to droning is the most important one. All right, um, listen, all right, I see this happen a lot. When you're playing Cali, your secondary is your primary, for gunfights at least. Unless you're taking extremely long-range gunfights, like 50 meters plus, which rarely happens in this game, your SMG, your secondary, is going to be your primary weapon. I don't know why. But whenever people play Cali, they feel like they're Chris Kyle and they can just smoke anyone who crosses their path. Well, you just prove to yourself that that's not going to happen. So, just a little rule of thumb and a quick tip. Don't use Cali's sniper to entry frag or take map control or anything like that. Please don't. Alright, so I've been watching and kind of going through this section of the VOD here when you're dead for... Ever since you died up until now. I don't know how long it's been. Maybe 40, 50 seconds. Whatever the time is. It's too long to the point where you're not on cams. You didn't get on cams once. I watched this whole portion. I skipped through some of it, but, you know, I watched 90% of the point of you dying up until now, and you didn't get on cams once. You've only been spectating people. This is a very basic and common mistake as well, where players just don't feel the need to get on cams. And a lot of the time, whether they want to admit it to themselves or not, they know that they should be on cams. And you're typing in chat, which is understandable. I'm not sure. Okay, so you're saying that you should have, you, you think that you, you, or you know that you should have switched to the SM, uh, SMG secondary on Cali uh, way earlier, which is, you know, a great um, self-recognition mistake, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's great. That's a good start. That's what a lot of players struggle to deal with is finding their mistakes, fixing them, and then moving on. You should never allow a mistake to happen twice. But what I wanted to get back earlier is, you know, the mistake of you not getting on cam. So you, you, you realize the mistake that you just made of not switching to the secondary. Now you need to fix or find and fix the mistake of not getting on cams. So there's no other way to put it besides get on cams. Like it should be a habit immediately, unless you need to spectate someone or figure out what angle they're holding to communicate it, to bridge a gap of communication. If the two alive teammates aren't communicating, whatever the situation is, if you are, needing to spectate someone for a very specific reason other than that get on camps it's as simple as that So what's happening here is that there was a roamer upstairs. He jumped into CCTV. The Zofia that we're spectating here or watching the viewer placed a claymore on the garage window jump in. So what can happen here is one of two things. Either you can waste the time, hold this angle for no reason, because what you're doing here is you're holding the wrong angle. There's no reason for you to keep holding this angle because there's a claymore on it, right? You have the audio cue or the death of the person if they trip the claymore and die to it, or you'll you'll have the audio cue of them destroying it, um, and also the vault sound as well. So, this is a huge mistake that you're making here that you're not even realizing, which is the fact that your CCTV window jump in into Garage Raptors is already covered by your claymore that you placed. So what the mistake is here is that you are not holding red stairs, which is going to allow the roamer to potentially walk into CC past the angle you're holding. He's not even going to, you know, come into your angle, go into red hallway, walk down red stairs into lounge, 
just because you're not understanding what you're doing here. So what you should be doing here is eliminating the CCTV window to rafters angle. So that way you can hold bottom red stairs flank. So if you leave the rafter stairs, you know, play close swamp door, something like that, mini stairs, you know, this this area of the map right right down here in the uh, more in the bottom middle of the screen is called mini stairs. That's a pretty common call, call out. And then the lower portion where lounge, you know, this might be the lounge floor here. And then there's a little staircase right here. And then there's like the drop off right here, right? Um, this lower portion of lounge itself is called swamp. So what you should be holding here is swamp cross because this roamer could very easily walk into red hall, down red stairs, come peek mini door, kill you or rotate back site. So do you see what happened here? Um, you are overly focused about your CC and someone walked into lounge. And this guy's going to go blue stairs, possibly go and kill your teammates. Ooh. I'm not sure if that guy in lounge died already. I'm not sure if it was the the Capcan that just died. Maybe it was the Jaeger that just died, but either way. Um, do you see what happened here? And also now that you dropped oil pit, there's no pinch maneuver to that person that might be flanking blue stairs still. There's absolutely no pinch for that, so now... They only have to worry about one side of pressure, which is bottom blue stairs, because you dropped oil pit. So you know you have Zofia stuns. That gives info. If you guys don't know how Zofia stuns work, there's a mechanic with it. Same thing with the Elamines. It's proximity based. Once it comes into the proximity of an enemy, it will detonate. Zofia stuns, extremely impactful. Very good info if you know how to use them. Also, you have a drone. We, t we already talked about it. Your drone is like a second or third life when it comes to attacking. If you're not utilizing them for their intended purpose, then why do you even have them in the first place? Oh no. Um, this is another very common thing to see in lower ranks is to reinforce all of blue off. Blue is a very important piece of map control for the attackers. So as the defenders, it should be your responsibility to deny that area of the map as much as possible. I'm sure you've experienced it. I'm talking to the viewer here. I'm sure you've I'm sure you've experienced it where a lot of the time there's at least one attacker that comes blue side. That's because it's a very common piece of map control. Whether or not the attacker knows why they're taking it and the importance of taking it or not. They're taking it regardless. So it's up to you and your defensive team to figure out a way to deny the attackers of the map control. That's what that's one of your main things as a defender, right? Whether you notice it or not is to deny the attackers the map control that they're trying to take away from you. That's the whole point of them attacking on paper. So you reinforcing off blue like this allows the attackers to have less to worry about. If you don't know how to play blue or hold it, watch a pro league game. I have a bomb site breakdown on this map as well. And I go into depth on, you know, blue side because it's a very important and overlooked piece of map control with its rotates, with its reinforcements. And all that good stuff. So if you guys are interested in that or the viewer itself, if they're interested in that, go check out that video. But nonetheless, yeah, reinforcing blue off, very common mistake and a common thing to see in lower ranks. And it's a really bad habit to form because you're going to fall onto the, under the com comfortability of just reinforcing it off and not having to worry about it. And then once you rank up, you're going you're gonna to start playing against people who know why they need to take it and they take it very efficiently, especially because it's reinforced off. So you need to learn how to play it now versus being forced to learn how to play it later. Alright, so one thing that I'm noticing about you um, that wasn't mentioned in your VOD form that you should be working on is your understanding of the audio cues and audio engines. So you are... Very unaware of your surroundings, and this is something that a lot of people struggle with in this game, is their situational awareness and their surroundings. And one of the great ways to kind of get comfortable in these positions and situations is knowing what you're hearing when you're hearing it when it comes to the audio cues in this game. So if you're unfamiliar with the audio cues, you know, you can go into a custom game with a friend, run around a map that you might struggle with when it comes to audio, learn the audio cues on different surfaces, whether it's a rug, a, a patch of dirt, a metal staircase like this one here. If I go back here and play 
the audio of the ash walking down metal stairs that's how i knew she was there is because not only propagation and direction of the audio but also the texture of the foot footprints when she was walking so right there you you heard the audio cues of the ash friendly last operator standing there again And then I, the last one was kind of hard to hear, but she was sprinting down blue stairs right before the ash charger detonated. So there are three different audio cues of the same texture of audio, which would indicate where the ash is and where she's pushing. Mission failed. All friendlies have been mm. Mm. Th this is uh, this is another thing that that is a, is an issue with uh, with a lot of lower elo players as well as they. They don't really know what to do in clutch situations, which is fine, you know. You know, uh, clutch situations are really, really difficult to kind of help people with because not only is there so many different situations where you might need to clutch in based on positioning utility, like there's so many different possibilities when, when it comes to this game. And you can't really say one thing that will apply to every single situation. But one thing that I can say just about this game in general if you know that there's going to be a attacker in the bomb site or an enemy near you, don't just sprint into their line of sight or wherever they might be. Because you need to pie the room, you need to take angle by angle, so that way you don't overexpose yourself like you did here to multiple different angles all at once. Because you, you sprint past the door here and now look what you're exposed to, right? You're exposed to dirt behind you, you're exposed, exposed to back arsenal, you know, where the Mav is laying down. Kitchen hatch, default plant, box one, uh, on the bomb chassis, um, on, on the back side of box one. Like, there's a lot of different angles and sub angles in these angles themselves where the attacker could be holding. So, you want to be pre aiming these, taking them one by one instead of taking multiple at once. Does that make sense? Because now it's much more of just a reaction of, okay, I'm going to sprint in. I don't know where he is. Let's hope for the best. That's pretty much what I'm seeing here. Okay, so when it comes to reinforcing the top red wall, you usually don't want to do the far right side. You commonly see the top red reinforcement put in the middle because that allows you to play a little bit of red stairs, top red stairs, and also by you reinforcing the right side in order to conceal yourself or take cover behind the reinforced wall from construction angle, you need to expose yourself in front of the drone hole somewhat. So you're just pushing yourself towards the CC side a little bit more, which isn't all that great and also... Reinforcing the middle allows you to kind of rotate up and down red stairs, play red stairs a little bit safer. Um, I just wanted to touch on that because, you know, what I'm seeing here are very, um, on, because what I'm seeing here are not very well, well thought out reinforcements and you don't really know what to reinforce. So I just want to clear the air on that, make sure that you are properly reinforcing the next time you play this map. Okay, so when it comes to a situation like this, where putting a mute jammer on a doorway is completely fine, don't get me wrong, but when you're the only wall denial operator on your entire defensive lineup, you kind of need to conserve those uh, mute jammers at wall denial a little bit for, more for the bomb site itself. So making sure that the CC wall is, uh, you know, muted off because you don't want to allow the attackers just to get the wall for free, right? Like you want to make their job as hard as possible. That's one of the common things that you should be doing as a defender is not only putting yourself in the best position you can be to take as many different situations or tackle them as well as you can, but also make their job as hard as it can be. That's the same thing when it goes to attack. Like you want to make your job easier and the enemy's jobs harder, right? So you don't want to give the CC wall up for free. You don't want to give up the cash wall for free. Like these are things that you should be thinking about when you see your lineup and just the little things that could really make the difference of how much the attackers can impact the round um, just based off one piece of utility not being placed properly or whatever it is. I'm expecting here the attackers to get the wall in the first 45 seconds of the round, which is uh, not that great because that's a lot of pressure being added to the bomb site itself. Uh, allowing the attackers just to get the CC wall open for free. Okay, so you did eventually go to mute off the CCTV wall, but one thing that I'm noticing about the way that you're playing mute is that you're not really thinking about where you want to place your utility. 
Um, this is another really basic thing that happens in lower elo and just players in general. They don't, they allow th that load in time, you know, or or the time that they select an operator and they're waiting for the team to select one or the en the enemy that downtime in the game before and after the round. That that time should be used for something to benefit the team. You shouldn't be going on TikTok and looking at ashes being shaked on, on your For You page. Like, that's just not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be pre mentally preparing yourself for the next round. What you want to accomplish, where you want to place your utility, all that good stuff. Because when you're not doing that, that shows that you're not interested, you're not passionate, and you don't really care that much if you want to win or lose. You might say that you want to win a lot, but... When you're not using every single crucial second of this game and round and time that you're in the game to your advantage, then do you really care that much? Because to me, you don't. A bomb has been located by Op 4. Op 4 located a bomb. Protect. So instead of going into a situation and holding an angle unknowingly of the info that might be happening here, which is you're expecting them to be taking garage control and rafters control, what you could do here to clear that that thought and the possible pressure that might be added that might be false just because you're thinking that they're going to take garage is to check garage default. That'll clear all of the info that you might think that they're doing or or whatever it is away like that like if you just check to see if garage default is up and if it isn't that might tell you that they're in garage after so now you actually need to worry about it instead of just thinking that you need to worry about it and if it's up then you check garage rafters if nobody's there then you hold breach angle <laughs> that, that was a tough situation to uh to try to win though i'll, I'll give you that much like the, a 1v5 especially with the gun that has 17 bullets, like, is no fun. Um, but what you should be trying to do here and accomplish is, you know, this guy, this this other guy's still construction. Uh, you hear him right when you try to go through the rotate. So you hear him running behind you in construction. Um, so what you kind of should be looking for here is the picks, not necessarily trying to kill the planter, because when, when it comes to planting in this game, you can usually kind of predict... Um, the fact that there's going to be multiple attackers or more than one with the diffuser itself because, you know, you need someone to plant and then you need someone to cover, right? That's just like a, a Siege 101, you know, search and destroy 101. Like, that's just a given. Um, but the other guy, Construction, that is a 1v1 gunfight. If you can alleviate that pressure for one side, instead of being sandwiched in between Construction door here and then, you know, CC pressure here and you're in the middle... Uh, get rid of this pressure. Now you only have to worry about this section, if that makes sense. Like, instead of having to worry about two sides, only have to worry about one. But other than that, that's the end of the VOD. You know, you uh, you lost the clutch, unfortunately. It's match point, so the attackers did, uh, did win this round. So the biggest things that I want you to focus on is your mental preparation before you even load into the round on attack and defense. With attack, you are driving your drones into the building, get you know, having them being shot, not even using your drones, which is something that I'm going to go over in a moment. But on defense as well, you know, you're running around to the two rounds that you did get to play defense. You just ran around, didn't really think about where you're going to put your utility. You just kind of looked, oh, I think this is a good spot. Like that was your whole kind of premeditated thought when it came to placing your utility. Also, uh, on attack, you know, I just mentioned it, but drones, make sure you're using them. Make sure you're getting on your drones. Very important. Also, in clutch situations, I know it's really hard, but you just have to be ready and able to take the angles as they come, take the gunfights as they come. I know it's really, really difficult, and you might seem really lost and, and pressured at times, but it only comes with time with the ability to clutch situations and, and learn from them and stuff. You know, I, I'm not a perfect player. Nobody has a 100% clutch win rate in their, in their entire history of playing this game. Like, it's just, it's, it's almost impossible. I, I, I'm not one to say that something's impossible, but 
I'll tell you something. It's pretty damn hard to have 100% success rate in clutches. Like it's it, like a one bullet headshot game. There's too many different uh, probabilities of a situation. Like it's only going to come with time when it com comes to clutches. You know, it, it, reinforcing that confidence, which is something that we're also going to go over. And you mentioned in your VOD uh, form. But yeah, clutch situations like repetition after repetition, figuring out what you did wrong, what you did right, and then going from there is the biggest thing. Uh, but when it comes to confidence and consistency and stuff like that, with confidence, it all starts with your mentality. If you don't have confidence in your mentality or you don't reinforce your confidence with your mentality, that whole foundation of confidence is going to have a negative trickle effect all the way down the ladder up until the point where you feel like you're worthless as, a, as an individual and a player. You never want to allow that to happen because that's you making a mistake, not fixing. Because that's you making a mistake that could very easily be avoided as long as you tell yourself that you're the better player. I'm going to I'm gonna smoke this guy if he peeks me. That's all. Like, that's what I do. I, I tell myself in my head, clutch, clutch situations, like, I, I got to clutch up here. Like, there's, there's no room for error. It all starts with your mentality, and if you lack confidence, you're going to lose gunfights. It's as simple as that. If you guys enjoyed or learned anything new, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. As I said at the beginning of the video, 50% of you guys aren't subscribed, so make sure you guys hit that sub button. I also want to mention before I go again that I'm doing coaching, so if you guys are interested in a VOD review like this one here, but that is an hour long and you will get much more in-depth info than this here, there's a link to my Patreon down below in the description, and yes, I do coach console players. And I also want to mention that I have a second channel, so if you guys already enjoy my content or want to see more from me, there's a link to my second channel down below in the description. And I also post coaching sessions from clients, like private coaching sessions over there. So if you guys are a little on the edge, you're not sure if you want to commit to a coaching session or what you might get, I release most of my coaching sessions there. I post them every single Monday. So if you guys are interested in that and just want to watch private coaching sessions that other people are paying for, then there's a link to my second channel where I post them every single Monday. And there's also a link to the Wichita Wolves, which I am a content creator for, so make sure you guys go show them some love. But with all of that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new, and I will see you guys in the next video.